Hello, welcome to the Monday, March 14th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier on Friday came across a malware sample that's a bit unique for its use of web sockets. Usually malware likes to use just plain old HTTP requests and various networks as well as host-based security products, of course, know very well how to deal with this sort of regular uh, HTTP. WebSocket uh, may be a little bit of a blind spot here for some of these tools in particular. This sample actually doesn't even bother with a TLS. Only two out of the 54 anti-malware engines used by virus total are recognizing this particular sample. WebSockets, well, it implements a simple two-way protocol, which is great for command control channels. That's sort of how it's often uh, used in uh, modern web applications, but also kind of to stream data, which of course for uh, exfiltration uh, may work quite well. While you're playing with WebSockets, double check if your host-based data leakage or data exfiltration solutions are detecting them properly. Have seen some blind spots there in the past where they do detect if a browser submits normal HTTP requests, but they don't necessarily detect the data in WebSockets. And talk about command control channels, Avast uh, found a version of Raccoon Stealer using Telegram as a command control channel. Telegram is getting somewhat popular uh, for command control due to its relatively easy uh, to use API. Raccoon Stealer, as the name implies, is an information stealer. It steals usernames and passwords as well as cookies and other authentication tokens. The data is actually not exfiltrated via Telegram. However, Telegram is used to find the actual URL to which the data is then passed and the URL that's being used then for the actual uh, command and control. By the way, the URLs here appear to be just IP addresses, not host names. A Seek script detecting outbound connections to IP addresses that did not get returned as a DNS response is always something uh, good to have in your repertoire. And it would, for example, detect this type of activity. The URL again here is just using HTTP, not a TLS, which at this point is almost suspicious in itself. The data is encrypted using RC4, so you're unlikely going to see anything uh, in the data if you're sort of, you know, monitoring again uh, for uh, data leakage. Avast isn't sure how this particular mal malware got installed on the infected systems. They believe it was some kind of downloader who did it, but how the user then got to the downloader, well, uh, that's a little bit an open issue here. Could be via game cheats they're suggesting, and that's, of course, always a popular way to get your system infected. I got a little bit an older story that didn't make it uh, in last week's uh, podcasts, uh, but I think it shows how important it sometimes is to uh, monitor data that you're receiving uh, from third-party applications. USA Hertz is a web-based application used to track animal uh, diseases, so uh, state uh, Health departments are using that, and then via the web-based interface, it's possible uh, to uh, report cases. Mandiant reported last week how this application was used to attack several state networks. Data sent to the application was encrypted, but encrypted using a fixed key, so all the installations used the same key that wasn't supposed uh, to be that way. That, of course, makes it easier than uh, to send data uh, to the central application collecting all uh, these reports. Apparently, the real reason why two of the states then got compromised was a log4j vulnerability. Not really clear what the attacker was after here and or if any data was exfiltrated. But of course, uh, government uh, networks are always uh, on the hit list of other state-sponsored actors. And they may just want to get a foothold and poke around to see if there's anything useful for them to find or then yet again to exploit these trust relationships. 
And then in updates, there's a new version of Yara out, the open source uh, malware detection uh, language, Yara 4.2, that now includes the new console module. Now, uh, we had some diaries about this before it was out in beta for a while, but now it's actually official. And that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.